everyone, and welcome. I am Jakiva Phillips, the editor-in-chief of Word Lit Bean, which is a quarterly for Seattle's poets and writers. And this show you're about to see is Z-Sides. Now, Z-Sides is a take on the term B-Sides, which refers to the lesser-known tracks on a very popular album. Well, in this show, we're going to bring Seattle's underground scene to your very home. We're going to be talking to all of Washington State's poets, writers, storytellers, tastemakers, troublemakers, and so much more. Now, what you're about to see is part of a three-part segment we are calling Poetry Tastemakers, where we have Washington State Poet Laureate Claudia Castro Luna. We also have Seattle civic poet Anastasia Renee, and last but not least, youth poet laureate Lillianne Baumgart. First, they're going to be sharing their work with you, and then we're going to have real talk with all things poetry. Are you ready? Up next is Washington State Poet Laureate Claudia Castro Luna. Seattle's poem. Seattle is a house perched on the comings and goings of water and wind, feather of crow, ripple of fish, early morning fairy yawn. Seattle, I say, and invoke a man and a place, the two inseparable, not proportional, not parallel, but as language is to poem and salt to sea. I've watched bridges, bicyclists, boats, summer blankets tendered on public lawns. I've watched fiery sunsets tango and sway above jagged peaks and autumn trees bursting gold up and down hilly streets. Nevertheless, before I postcard and gloss and more sunsets and more trees find their way into my lines, I must confess the house's foundation is in places brittle and many rooms are dark for windows lack. Plenty have I been on the receiving end of rehearsed indifference, heard enough shallow arguments on who belongs here to wake up scooping ocean water with a spoon. We are all here that need to be. The city is concrete and steel, plus the sum of its people. Every day we destroy our house and race to remake it. Those narrow windows block futures view. Mute voices that need to be heard muffle the sound of the falling tree limb, heavy with ripe plums. Every day, we tread over Chief Self's legacy, his prophetic words. At night, when the streets will be silent and you think them deserted, they will throng with the returning hosts that once filled them and still love this beautiful land. We are not alone. Save for his people, we are all immigrants here, waiter, teacher, artist, worker, nurse, we belong, all of us belong. Seattle is a house we all need to afford. Tyranny of the Milky Way. The way clouds taste as they go from castles to rabbits above your head. You are 12, your skin damp, from the humid tropical day, the grass under your arms and legs benign, even if itchy. The way a million stars scatter at night, and you in jersey gown and bare feet seek the same spot from earlier in the day to count far away incandescent rocks, and tucked behind your ear, your secret wish to spot a single UFO. The way a slice of tres leches cake on your 13th birthday surrenders in unison on your tongue its sweet milks. The way at 12 you tasted marvel and by 14 you tasted war. Claudia! Thank Hello. you so much for being a part of Z Sides. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, oh, I'm like so happy I finally get to sit down and chat with you again. Yes. Um, I did interview for Word Lit Zine and I just could not have enough time with you. So I'm glad we have more. Well, thank you. <laughs> that was great. We had a great time. Actually. We did. All right, so you are the Washington State Poet Laureate, correct? Mm -hmm. 
All right, so uh, tell us kind of what that job entails. What's inside the job of Washington State Poet Laureate? It sounds like you have all of the world's poetry on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it's a big job. It's, it's a big job. Um, well, the job is supported by two statewide organizations, Humanities Washington and the Commission of Arts Washington, and they do tons of programming throughout the state, and this is one more program that they support. So essentially, the Poet Laureate is supposed to be an ambassador for poetry throughout the state of Washington. That means bring, creating awareness, sharing the love, holding um, readings in, I mean, libraries, schools, parks, penitentiaries, I mean, you name it. Um, you wherever, name it. wherever there's a space, the poet goes, you yeah. know? Um, so yeah, and part of what I love about it is um, getting people to write. I always really welcome the opportunity to get people to, to write poems. Actually, right before I left the house, I got contacted by Humanities Washington that um, a person, a man, in the Walla Walla Penitentiary where I did a presentation sent me a letter and some poems. Oh because I told them that if they w after we did a workshop and we had a, a great afternoon of poetry there, I said, if you feel that you want to communicate with me, here's my address, and they have done it. So I haven't read it, but I'm very excited yeah. that they follow through. Yeah, so, and like that, I'm getting, you know, poems sent. I've been, I I'll do um, a presentation and a few weeks later, I'll get a poem. Somebody says, you know, I was so inspired. Here's this poem that I wrote. And I'm learning that that, that that does happen, and it's a really wonderful feeling. I feel like that's the highest compliment you can get paid as a poet, right? It's like, oh, I inspired you. Oh, I inspired you to make more things. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that that's uh, a wonderful thing. Um, so, so you're continually getting poetry from other people. Uh, are you going to like compile it in like a, a book or something? Or what are you going to do with all these poems mm. that people are sending you? Well, part of what I'm doing is I'm starting every presentation that I do I begin by reading a poem written by a youth or a child in Washington State. Okay. And then I follow that by a poem written by an adult, where whether the person is an established poet or a published poet or somebody who just sends me a poem. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to kind of cr cross um, pollinate so that if I'm in Eastern Washington, I'll read poems from Western Washington and vice versa to get a little bit of a dialogue going because we do have a um, topographical divide, just to put it that way. And so part of it is getting ideas and thoughts and feelings across to each other in that very small gesture of reading each other's work. But, um, but I do have projects, not publishing projects. So Todd Marshall, who was the previous Poet Laureate, published an anthology. My project is more, it's more of a digital project, so the project that I want to put together, I mean, there are several projects I want to do, but the big one um, is to do a digital project that showcases poems of place, very much like similar to what I did with the Poetic Grid when I was serving a Seattle civic poet and I created this map of Seattle that has superimposed on it poems of place written by a variety of people in all corners of the city. So the idea with the state is to try to have a map of the state that you would open up online and you would see, again, dots on this map and these dots would be poems written by citizens across Washington State talking specifically about where it is they live and what is it they love or don't love or they miss or they yearn for in the location in which they stand. And that is quite an ambitious project. Yeah, that is super ambitious. Mm -hmm. So so like if I were to look at this poetry grid and I would open it up and then it's like I click on like Ballard and then you see all these poems about Ballard. That is true of the okay. Seattle of the Seattle Poetic Grid. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. But I mean, we all know what that's going to be. It's just going to be avocado toast and like beanies because <laughs> hipsters. Not, <laughs> well, not necessarily. You would be surprised. Okay, all right. You would be surprised. I mean, the po the Poetic Grid in, in um, I think in Seattle really captures this moment that we're that we're living through this this incredible transformation that we are experiencing, and that we're all caught in this web that is. Um, 
like an undertow, really. Sometimes it feels like an undertow. We are being pulled under this tremendous construction boom and restructuring of our economy and all the repercussions that that has for people who are losing their housing and losing jobs and having to relocate. So I think that the grid, which, was which came out, I think, last year or a year ago, is really a wedge of time, uh, of Seattle's time. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting as we move on, and hopefully the project will stay up as a digital book, uh, to see, you know, 10 years hence, what were we doing? What were we thinking? Because that's what poetry does. It captures feelings, right? I mean, that's, that's what poetry is. It's like a distillation of a feeling. And so each time, even though I edited and I collected and I helped write many of those poems. When I go back and I look at it, I had my students at Seattle U look at the grid and, and you know, think about it and read the poems. And I did it yet again with them. I'm, I'm hit by the poems that are there, you know. I'm, I'm surprised by these poems. And like I said, I've read them many times. So hopefully people who have never seen it will come across and discover something about the city and hopefully about themselves. And I'm hoping that the larger project about Washington State will do something very similar to yeah. us as citizens of this state, yeah. which is changing also, you know, yeah. at, a, at a tremendous change. I mean, we're in this little bubble of Seattle, well, yeah, but the I rest like of the state, bubble, oh yeah, you know, it's a good it's, bubble. It's gotta be burst. <laughs> yeah, and it's been interesting for me serving as the laureate for the state because I was ensconced in Seattle for those two years, really steeped in, um, in the poetry scene here, and now I'm really turning away from the immediate and looking out at the rest of the state, at all of the communities that are, that are there. Um, the changing nature of our communities across Washington State. I mean, how is it changing? Well, I think that we have, there's more um, people of color in the state. Latinos now make up 12% of the overall population of the state. Really? Mm -hmm. A lot of our schools are made up of, have grown by 300% in terms of like students, immigrant students who've come to the school or kids who are descendant of, of recent immigrants to the state who are also people of color. So I think our public schools are the kernel for what the state is going to be in, you know, in 10 years. And for me, it's really important to, to focus on that. This is why I read youth poems. You know, this is why I want to be in the schools. And you, know, you asked earlier about my position of poet laureate and what is it that the laureate does. And, and I said, you know, we're, the person is an ambassador of poetry throughout the state. But for me, as the first immigrant to occupy the position, and the first non, um, English is not my first language, so I'm, I'm a second language learner of English. Um, and also as a person of color, um, I, I have, I'm keenly aware of those facts as I travel across the state. And one of the things I think about when I am presenting at community colleges and schools is um, that, yes, I want to share my love of poetry with you, and I want to write poems with you, but I also want to show, especially our youth and our kids who may not have seen an immigrant woman, English language learner, be in a position of writing poems. That's what I do for a living. I'm a writer, and I write in English, you know, to serve as a, as a possibility to hold, to be a placeholder for somebody, to say, I could be that too if I wanted to, because I have seen somebody who has done that. I, I think I would have come to writing a lot sooner uh, had I had uh, role models that reflected my own experience. So I'm, I'm very aware and I work hard to to showcase that as a to show that as a possibility for for our young for our young people, yeah. and also um, you know parts of the state not not ever, not the whole state does not look like Puget Sound you know it does not look like King County yeah. <laughs> and so um, my effort there is to to show that immigrants. Um, like all other communities, are very diverse in our, in our natures and inclinations. And I think people, I want to chip away at this notion that, that immigrants 
are a particular way, that we are monolithic in a way, that we are working the service sector, that we break our backs washing dishes, that we, you know, do construction work, and I'm speaking in particular of Latino immigrants because that is my experience, or that we do backbreaking, you know, 12 hour, 16 hour job labor yeah. at, on the fields. Yeah, that your position is just as a worker and not as yeah. an artist. Yes, yeah. as a thinker, as an artist, as, a, as a somebody who's engaged with culture and shaping notions of who we are and where we're going. So it's, um, so I also want to the non-immigrant folks, I want to show that, you know, we are, we are capable of doing a range of things and to contribute to our collective lives, to contribute to this common good you know, this life that we share together in this, in this place where we live. Yeah. It's like going to church when you talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm like, oh, I'm just so enraptured by what you're saying. Because you're, I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, there are uh, preconceived notions that we have about different groups of people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we identify them as that's the place that they hold in society. Yep. And to uh, think for a second to have somebody like you know, as the Washington State Poet Laureate expanding on those ideas and saying, hey, you know, this is my power. This is what I'm using to showcase this. And, and like you said earlier, for somebody who looks, you know, like you, or even like me, to be able to see somebody who's like, oh, here's a woman of color in a position of power, and she's using it to tell more voices mm -hmm. of those people mm -hmm. and, repre and representing them. Mm -hmm. That kind of just like breaks the mold of, of any kind of placeholder in society that we, we hold other races or other, you know, immigration statuses yeah. to. Right? Yeah, and I mean, expectations and, uh, about ourselves and about each other, you know, it's the, it's the hardest thing to do is to move a person to to shift their perception yeah. or especially, perceptions. Yeah, especially of themselves, right? If you believe yeah. uh, to yes. a certain point that this is all you're ever going to achieve, the hardest thing to beat out of that is the truth that you can achieve more. Absolutely, yeah. that is for sure. That is for sure. Claudia, thank you so much for being a part thank of you. Z Sides thank and for this so interview. Yeah. You are so wonderful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Claudia Castro, Luna, uh, I know that you're at home probably watching this on your TV, but you should clap for her anyway, just like this. Ah. She is kind of my guru church person. So welcome to church. <laughs> Jakiva Phillips here, your host for Z Sides. Today is Pearls of Wisdom Day. So I'm here with three amazing poets that are gonna help dole out some friendly advice from getting your manuscript to some serious bookshelf eye candy. So please welcome Anastasia Renee, Seattle Civic Poet, Claudia Castro Luna, the Washington State Poet Laureate, and last but certainly not least, the Youth Poet Laureate, Lily Ann Baumgart. All right, so first question, I'm going to pose to you, Anastasia. You put out three books in one year. So how do you even begin to make that happen? I have to be honest, it's not like I wrote all the books in one year. Um, I don't know anyone who can write books, three books in one year and publish them. Not without like COVID. Not without, yeah, <laughs> some, yeah some serious stuff or something. Um, so for me, one of, one of my, secrets or one of the reasons why I think that I had enough material for, th for three books is that I, I have been writing every day since August 2010. I don't necessarily think this is something everyone should do, um, but for me it is one of the reasons why I had so much work and it just sort of happened that way. I um, presented my work at an AWP in 2015 to a publisher. I was really brave. I was just like, hey, I think you should publish my work. And she was just like, really? And I was like, yeah, really. <laughs> um, and I came with the manuscript and she was just like, no, we don't take manuscripts on the spot, but send it to me. So that was one thing that happened to work out. The other one, the other publisher, um, these people had seen me read a lot um, in the city. You never know when you're reading at an event what who is in the audience, and that's how that came about. And the other one was because I, I saw a couple of people that I really liked their work on this certain press, and even though they said they were not taking submissions, again, I sort of emailed someone and I said, well, I know you're not taking submissions, but I'd love it if you have a look at my manuscripts just for whenever you are. And that happened between 2015 and 16, and it just so happened that all of the far out publishing date ended up being, dates ended up being 2017. But it wasn't 
I didn't just wake up and write three books and then there they were. <laughs> I mean, I wish, maybe for 2019. Right, that's the goal for 2019. <laughs> that's the goal, yeah, but that's how those came to be. Right. Still, I had to write over time. They didn't just formulate. Yeah, so there is no like easy way of like, boom, I just want books. You actually have to put in the work, is yes, what you're saying. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I keep telling the youth, no, I didn't wake up January 1st and wrote three books, and then there they were in July. That's not what happened. <laughs> yes. I love your boldness, though. People are like, <laughs> yeah. we don't take this, and you're like, mm, yeah. but you, you do, should, right? Yeah. You should. <laughs> I, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely say assertiveness is a huge part of yes. getting your work out there. Assertiveness and doing the work. You can't just talk about that you're a writer. You can't mm -hmm. talk about what you're writing. You actually have to be writing so that when an opportunity presents itself, you have the work. Stay ready. You have to stay ready, but you can only stay ready if you have the work. Because mm -hmm. what, what if I got an opportunity and they were like, yeah, what do you have? And I'm like, oh, I have to go write it. <laughs> So I think it's a both and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Claudia, as an adjunct faculty member at Seattle U, I mean, you work with you know the young kids, the up and coming poets. What kind of advice would you have for them? Mm, I would say, write, write, write. Um, I think that a lot of times we are very concerned. We're we're our own worst critics and we criticize our own work constantly and uh, imagine what others may think of it or how it's going to be um, received and I think that is really detrimental to, to, our, to our writing process because writing and critiquing are two very different things. I mean it takes bravery to, to write, you know, it takes, it takes just losing yourself in what you're writing and just going for it um, rather than um, a mental space, which is the space of critiquing. I mean, writing is heart, you know, critiquing is mind. And you can't, it took me a long time to understand that, that writing, you just, I just have to let, walk into that, walk down that road. I don't know where it's gonna go. I don't know what turns it's gonna take. I just have to trust it, that it will be okay and that, I, that I'll be fine walking down this path and not constantly looking back over my shoulder thinking, but what if this, or what if that person doesn't like it, or how this will be, forget about it. You write, and then once you've written up, like uh, Anastasia said, you know, you could take, you could then, if you have a trusted person, you could show the work to a trusted person. I mean, when I was writing early on, as a college student, I made the mistake of showing my writing, my poems, which I kept so close to my heart because I didn't dare share them. Um, and when I did, they were not, it wasn't a, a, an effort that was encouraged. And so it, was, it took me back, way back. I mean, I lost ground in that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I would say, write, write, write. And when you feel like you wanna share with somebody, select someone whom you trust, who will, who will build you rather than critique you. Because, um, you know, it's, it's work. Like Anastasia said, mm -hmm. it just, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Did you also, because Anastasia said she wrote every day since August of 2010, do you also just like write every single day? Do you have your own personal uh, regimen or schedule? No, I mean, I wish I could say yes. I mean, in the best of times, like this morning, I, had, I took my son to um, his ferry. He goes to school on one of the islands, on Vashon Island. He's on a really early ferry, and I came home at 7 a.m. back from the ferry, mm -hmm. and I was able to sit down and do and write, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So on a perfect day, that's what I do. Um, but sometimes I have so much going on that I can't say that I, that I do and I no longer wait for that morning time. I mean, mm -hmm. if I have something that comes that I need to write it, I'll stop the car, I'll talking to my phone, <laughs> you know, I'll be walking and I'll be putting it in a note on my phone, yeah. you know, I'll do whatever to capture what it, that moment or what that thought. Yeah. When you said stop the car, I just pictured you on the freeway and you're like, stop! <laughs> <laughs> Haiku! I, I do pull over. <laughs> I bet I've been known to pull over. I, I, pull I over. love that though. Yep. I love that. I think for, I, I had a similar thing, you know, I, I would be like, I'm going to wait to have the proper time to write. And yeah. it's like, I hardly ever came around. And so actually just forcing yourself, I feel something now, I'm going to actually sit down and write it. Yes. Yeah. That's great advice. Um, so Lily, you actually 
just recently put out your book, Submitted to the Personal Ads, this month mm -hmm. of May, so of 2018. Yes. The 25th of May. I'm rambling now, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm just good. super excited for your book. Thank uh, you. What was that process like from start to finish? It was really exhausting. Um, it's part of the position as Youth Poet Laureate is at the end. You will get your book published as we hand over the position. My book is released, um, which is very exciting, but a year is a really short time mm -hmm. to put out a book. Yeah. Um, Especially because did you have everything in, during, before that year or were you kind of spending a portion of that year writing and then publishing? Like did, how much of the work did you have before you really had to barrel down with this publishing duty? I had um, started a manuscript before I was mm -hmm. awarded the position mm -hmm. um, through encouragement of Matt Gano and Aaron Counts who are the mentors for each Youth Poet Laureate, but also the finalist cohort as a whole. And they were like, everyone should get start putting manuscripts together. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like, you want, like, you're, it's you, you're gonna put out a book. And I was like, oh, thank God you told me to do that because mm -hmm. <laughs> this would have been a lot harder. Mm -hmm. um, Do they uh, work with you with, um, you know, the cover art and stuff like that? Because that's also another thing with like, publishing your book, it's not mm -hmm. just once you have the manuscript, it's not just writing every day, it's the whole process mm -hmm. of, you know, your cover art, you know, what kind of typeset, what kind of yeah. size of the book. Um, did you have any, you know, creative control in that respect? Yeah, it was a bit um, restricted through Penmanship Books is the publisher that I have, and mm -hmm. they typically do photographs of the author on the front of the book. Mm -hmm. and. I was like, this is so quick. I don't have the time to be like, hey, I wanted to have a friend draw X, Y, and Z or whatever. You know, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to focus on my writing. And so the cover honestly was not entirely like an afterthought, but I'm very, very lucky to have um, Aisha Alamine, who is my photographer, who is incredibly creative and was like, oh, we should do this and that. And you should be wearing this and go stand by that pretty like, tree with those flowers on it yeah. and I was like yeah. thank you because I would have no idea what to do <laughs> um, so as a whole like putting it all together was a very collaborative effort yeah well yeah. I, I love that like, you know it takes a village to it make does. a book I it love really that does. It, does. <laughs> it really does all right so that has been our segment on pearls of wisdom for getting your book published if you want to know more you can find any one of these lovely people on the interwebs go buy their book go see them at a reading and then you can buy them a cup of coffee and talk shop uh, but either way keep on writing and we will see you on the next z sides